Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and this video is a follow-up to my previous video on Capture One Express for Fujifilm shooters. So since I published that video, it's actually turned out to be one of my most popular videos to date. I've actually had lots of questions and there's been a few things that I want to kind of follow up on because I didn't quite explain properly in the first video and also I, I made a few mistakes. Actually, I made one mistake, uh, one very specific mistake, but I will go into that in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I have my list here of things that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I'm going to cover some questions um, that people left in the comments. And also, uh, as I said, just a couple of things that I'd like to clarify. So let's dive right in. So the first question is about film simulations and in particular Fuji's film simulation modes or the picture modes. So lots of people wanted to know, are they in Capture One? If so, where are they? And if not, why not? So um, let me just show you. Uh, they are not, <laughs> basically, at the moment, um, they do not have the film simulation modes. However, um, they have stated Capture One, the people behind Capture One Phase One have stated that they are coming and um, it is a priority, so they're working on that. So hopefully in the next version or the version after that, you should see them. And th there is a workaround um, because uh, some people have um, put uh, their own versions online and you can actually download them and install them. I already have a video about this, how to do this for Capture One Pro. So I will link that in the description below and all you have to do is follow that. So that brings me to one of the points that I got wrong in the previous video. So I showed that, or I stated that the pro version had options to show color profiles from all the cameras and it was missing in the express version, uh, but it's not actually missing. It's actually here. So all you have to do is if you go under the ICC profile pop-up and go show all, you can now see all the different, um, all the different cameras that Capture One supports and you can select a color profile from any of those. So uh, it doesn't have a massive effect. It's not like going to magically make one camera look like another camera, but it, it can have interesting differences. And again, if you have custom color profiles, they will show up here as well. So if you follow the video that I have linked below, uh, it will show you how to download some custom profiles that people made, which match the film simulation modes. Okay, so next question. Uh, yes, the Q menu. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody emailed me shortly after I released that video and got, and I wanted to know why I didn't have the Q menu. And uh, that was a very good question, which I didn't know anything about um, until I looked it up and realized. So basically what had happened was uh, when I installed Capture One, um, I installed it over the previous Pro version. Uh, actually, you don't even have to, to reinstall it. You just change the license. So I changed it from the Pro version that I had installed on my laptop to the Express version uh, specifically so I could do research on it and show you guys everything that's um, in the, the Express version. And when I did that, uh, it left some things behind and didn't quite reset the interface properly. So I was missing the Q menu. So I have managed to get it back after uh, a lot of messing around. I'm still not entirely 100% certain how I got it back, but it's back. Normally, uh, the Q menu is in um, Capture One Pro 2, but it is disabled by default and you can add it by right clicking on the interface. But in the Express version, it seems to be there by default. Uh, it just wasn't on mine. So that was missing from the previous video. So what is the Q menu, I hear you ask? Um, basically, uh, what they have done is taken the most common adjustments and put them into one menu and called it the Quick menu. And it's like things like white balance, exposure, high dynamic range, black and white, and clarity. They're kind of all the things that you would want to use the most often, probably. And rather than having to jump back and forth between tool tabs, they're all pretty much just here in the one panel. And a couple of people have written to me and said that yeah, they find it actually makes uh, working in Capture One a lot easier. So uh, yeah, apologies for that. I missed that on my first video. Um, so. There it is now, uh, it comes up as a queue. If you had the trial version of Capture One Pro installed and you switched to the Express version, you may not see this. You're gonna have to delete the preferences files and the Capture One folder from within the application support folder if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, I have no idea. I'm sorry, I don't know how to reset it. <laughs> um, 
and I couldn't find an official response, but the way I was able to do it on my own system was just by deleting all the preferences, basically. Okay, so next question. Oh, um, this is kind of related to, um, somebody asked me about uh, library files, or in the case of Capture One, what they call uh, catalogs. So, in the Pro version of Capture One, you can have multiple catalogs, and you can switch between them at any time, and it comes up in the file menu, you will see the option to new catalog or open catalog. And unfortunately, in the Express version, it's one of the features they've disabled, obviously again, because it's free, they don't want to give you everything and there is no way to move your catalog file. However, <laughs> there's kind of a workaround. You can switch to a catalog by holding down the option key on starting up Capture One. So let me just show you uh, what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna quit Capture One. I have Photoshop running in the background here, so just ignore that for the moment. So what you want to do basically is, if you hold down the option key at startup, you will get the option to choose your Capture One catalog. So you can create a new catalog or you can browse and select your catalog. So that is how to get around that. It's quite finicky, um, but again, the option is there and it's better than nothing. And uh, next question. Yes, so uh, one of the problems people had was uh, when they went to edit in Photoshop, what was happening was it was opening camera raw. So there's two things this can be, and I want to show this, show them both to you quite quickly. If you want to edit your image in Photoshop, there are two commands, and you want to be careful not to mix the two of them up. So if I right click on this, you will see there is the option to, for edit with and open with. So if I choose open with, you will see there's a list of options here, and I can go Photoshop. So when you choose open with, what it will do is it will actually send the raw file. And so you can see it's opening in camera raw and I have none of my edits are here. And if I go open image, it's it's basically switching to camera raw and using Adobe's own engine, which you probably don't want if you're using Capture One. So I'm gonna close this. So instead what you want to do is edit with. So edit with down here, you wanna select Photoshop and obviously you can select whatever you want. And in format, I always use TIFF and 16-bit, and then you want to go Edit Variant. Um, so what it's doing now is exporting a TIFF, and it is sending that over to Photoshop. So now it's opened the edited TIFF in Photoshop, and then you can do whatever you want to it, and save it, and it will send it back. So for example, if I say, uh, we just did this, and then maybe this, and I just hit Save. Okay, so that, sent that back to Capture One, and there we have the TIFF that we just edited in Photoshop. So that's how you do it. So there's one other thing. Um, if you do this and it still opens Camera Raw, what you need to do is there's actually a preferences in Photoshop you need to change. So if you go into Photoshop and then go to Preferences and File Handling, okay, and then go Camera Raw Preferences, and what you want to do down here uh, where you see the option for TIFF is disable TIFF support. So by default, this is automatically open TIFF with settings. And this kind of get can get a bit screwy when you're doing editing from other applications. Okay, so I would disable TIFF support um, if you have this problem. Okay, so. Okay, so next question, watermarking. So lots of people ask me, uh, can you watermark in the software? And in the Express version, you can't. You can in the Pro version. Unfortunately, that's just a limitation of the free version for the moment. Um, maybe they might add it in a future version, but again, because it's free, they have to give you, they have to not give you everything. And they've chosen watermarking as one of the things to not give you. So uh, yeah, unfortunately you can't watermark directly within the application. So if you do want to watermark, uh, what I recommend that you do is either export your images and you can use Lightroom to watermark or Photoshop. Um, but if you don't have any of that, I use a little program called Photobulk. Let me just bring it up here. So I use this application here called Photobulk. And basically you can set up fairly complex watermarks in this and then you can just drag and drop images into it. So say once you've exported everything, just want to create it earlier. And you can see I have my watermark all set up and you can actually resize your images to the right size and change the format and so on. So if you're exporting for the web, what I would do is export them out as kind of high res JPEGs and then use this to optimize them, adding a watermark and scaling them down. Um, yeah, it's not the most efficient use of space and 
absolutely it would be great to have it within the application but as i said it's in the full version of capture one it's just not in the express version okay so next up um lots of people wanted to know can you use capture one express in the same way that you would use say x transformer that is use it to do your conversions in capture one your kind of your basic straight up conversion and then do all your your editing in lightroom Technically, you can do this. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there's there's two ways you can go about doing it. I would still recommend that you do most of your editing in Capture One. You can absolutely finish in Lightroom or Photoshop or anything else. So in that case, all you need to do is just export it, uh, export it as a TIFF, um, 16-bit, uncompressed or zip doesn't really matter. Um, turn that off and just save your files out of capture one import them into lightroom and do whatever finishing you need to do do it in lightroom that will however you don't get all the the functions that you would get with x transformer um you you're not going to get the full highlight recovery and all that kind of thing so there is another thing you can do if you want to make your files flatter so um if you want to create like the most optimized version from capture one and then do all your editing in lightroom um, what you need to do is create a flat version basically. So if you go into, let's see, it's in the color tab and go to the base characteristics. So here where I currently have it set to high contrast, what you want to do is set that to linear. So what linear will do is basically creates a flat version. Uh, and let me just turn all these other adjustments off. And what I've also done is if you turn on the uh, clipping warning, and then use the highlight tabs just to make sure that you're not clipping any information. Uh, now there's still a little bit of clipping going on here, but that's basically the way the file is. There's not actually any more information there. So then you can then export that as a TIFF and import that into Lightroom, but you'll then need to reapply a curve to that. And uh, you're still not gonna get the film simulations or anything like that. So it's not an ideal workflow, but if you want to try it, by all means go ahead uh, again is to basically go into the base characteristics tab, set it to a linear response. That What that does is remove cap, removes Capture One's tone curve. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Um, just ignore this section and uh, yeah, pretend, pretend it never happened. Um, but yeah, so if you normally just want to do some finishing in, um, in Lightroom, what I suggest you do is just export as a TIFF, 16-bit TIFF. If you don't have a lot of works, but if you don't have a lot of space, then just use JPEG. So, if you notice here, you will see there's a DNG option here, but this doesn't actually work for Fuji files. Um, that's one of the limitations they have said. Uh, I don't know why, but at the moment it just doesn't work. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let me see what else have I got on my list here. Yes, there is one other thing, uh, which I forgot to mention in the original video that I did, and that is variants. So variants are Capture One's version of Lightroom's virtual copy. There's two things you can do. So let me just go to an image I have edited. And yep, yeah, so there's lots of edits on this. So when you right click on the image in the browser, you have two options. If you scroll down, you can see new variant and clone variant. So what new variant does is create a new version of the original raw file without any of your edits. So it's like basically a before. And if we go back here to this one and do that again, and if I go clone variant this time, clone variant basically copies the, the version. So uh, these are both virtual copies. And um, again, so you don't, uh, it's not using up any more disk space, but you uh, that's how you create multiple versions. Some people like to use the new variant as an option for before and after. This is what was uh, available before they added the newer before and after option. Um, okay. so. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can leave them in the comments below and I will do another follow-up video at some point in the future and try and answer all those questions as well. Uh, thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.